Hey guys, David again. I've explained proof compositions and recursion in previous videos, but I've sort of shied away from implementation details or, per, you know, not implementation, but details of the protocol. And I kind of want to dig into one of them, probably one of the most interesting uh, or the most annoying or challenging, uh, which is that the proofs that we sometimes create are in a specific field or a specific um, yeah, the, the, the data is in, in, in some field, but our circuit is in a different field. And so what do I mean by that? Well, in Plonk, when you when you have witness and uh, coefficients, like the, the selector polynomials, and, and when you form these polynomials, they, they have coefficients in a field, like you use field elements. Um, maybe we can call that the circuit field, you know, circuit field. Um, but when you create a proof, you will you will commit to these polynomials, and the way you commit to these polynomials is by doing scalar multiplication uh, of elliptic curve points, which are, you know, in a different field. So Planck uses KZG, um, the, that I've and I've talked about that polynomial commitment scheme in my Planck uh, series of videos. And Kimchi uses uh, Kimchi's the, the proof system used in Mina, which is a Planckish proof, proof system, uses um, inner inner product argument uh, polynomial commitment scheme, which I've never talked about. Maybe I'll do a video on, on that if there is enough interest. Uh, but basically, in both of these schemes, uh, to to create a proof, you end up doing um, you end up like doing scalar multiplication of elliptic curve points. And the scalars here are usually the polynomials that you're dealing with, and and uh, the the point are some points on an elliptic curve that's usually on uh, on some field. Uh, let's call that FP. And so now uh, I've I've sort of outlined the fact that there's two different fields, uh, and maybe I can dig a little bit deeper to explain why there are different fields. If you already know elliptic curves. You're, you probably already know that then. If you don't know too much about elliptic curves, I'm not gonna dig too much into elliptic curves. I'm gonna keep that as a black box. Um, and But I'll just explain enough so that you understand why there are two fields. So elliptic curves are um, just points. Like there's a, you know, if we if we instantiate uh, an elliptic curve with some, some a curve equation, we end up having a bunch of points, P1, P2, uh, et cetera, a lot of them because we want some security. Um, and all of these points are coordinates, you know, good old coordinates X and Y. And these values, these coordinates are in this field FP that I just described. But all of these points, you know, form, um, form, um, form the, the elliptic curve, right? That's all of these points. And, when you do arithmetic in the scalars of these points, you're doing arithmetic in a field Q. And so, you know, for example, if you 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 know that if you multiply uh, any point Q times, you'll get the point at infinity. Um, if you do any number plus Q, so that's the order of the order of our uh, T curve then you'll get back uh, A times, sorry, P. Yes, A times P. Uh, it, so we have sort of these rules where everything works uh, modulo Q, and so we're in a, in a field Q. And so that's that's what we call the, the base field. Or maybe you can call that the proof field, but it's it's uh, it's really called the, the base field. Uh, so that's, that's, these are the difference. We have the circuit field and the, uh, and the base field. And so once we go back to our, our scheme, imagine we have a prover, and that prover is instantiated over some elliptic curve. Let's call uh, that our elliptic curve E1. I don't know. Our circuit is over uh, the, the scalar field, right? But our proof, the proof we, care, we create is over this, um, this base field. And so if we want to do recursion, 
we want to implement a verifier circuit inside that circuit here that can verify a proof that looks like that. We can't really do that efficiently because we need to act and operate on elliptic curve points that have coordinates that are not in our scalar field, but in our base field, right? Uh, so that means we will have to add points together, we'll have to scale points, uh, and all of that is easily done if you can do, um, if you can implement your circuit in this field. But since our circuit is in a different field, it doesn't work well. Okay, the secret here is that you can find another curve, no, another curve, let's call uh, the curve E2, that has um, a base field and a scalar field. Uh, okay, so every curves have that, such that, um, such that the scalar field of this new curve is equal to the, ooh, ooh, what did I do? Is equal to, um, oh, I don't know what I'm doing anymore, is equal to the base field of the previous curve. And so now, we have this, uh, you know, prover in E2, and now our circuit is written over this, uh, this, this, um, this field that looks exactly this color field that looks exactly like our uh, proof, and so we can verify it. And what we'll produce is a proof. Let's call that proof two. This one was proof one, uh, and proof two this time. Um, is you know in in some other base field, and so we we successfully verified one one proof uh, in a circuit, uh, but we've only done that once, and so so now we have the, the the some some sort of similar problem, except that we're yet in another field, and so we have to yet find another elliptic curve for that. So so we have one one level of recursion. So. There's actually a, a very simple way to, to solve that. And the solution is that we find a curve E2 that has a base field that's exactly the same as our um, as our circuit field previously. And so basically the proof we created here can be verified efficiently by that circuit of, of this curve here because um, because again, this is in, what did I call it? I call that uh, FP, the circuit is in FP, and the proof that we produced were in FQ, and this circuit is in FQ. So, so we're kind of alternating, alternating between two curves. And so the Zcash team has invented a pair of elliptic curves called the PASTA, PASTA curves. And one is called Palace, and the other one, the other one is called Vesta. They are two curves with prime orders, uh, so so you you can't really use KZG because KZG, KZG is for pairing, uh, but you can use something like IPA uh, that that works with prime order curves that doesn't use pairings as your as your polynom polynomial commitment scheme. And Palace has uh, the scalar field of Palace is FQ and the base field of Palace is FP. And usually I remember it because P uh, is like Palace. You know? And so the other way around, in Vesta you have a scalar field FP and the base field is FQ, right? So that's the trick. That's the trick I wanted to, to talk about in this video. Uh, usually this is referred to as cycles of curves. And this one is, uh, I believe we call that a two cycle because, uh, cause, cause you know, we, it's, a uh, it's a loop that only involves, um, two curves, but you could, you know, you could make, you could have a bigger loop or, uh, or something like that. Cool. So. Last thing I want to mention is that this thing that I just explained is used um, in the paper BCTV14. Uh, I can't remember exactly the names, 
I'm not sure if you can Google that. I'll, I'll post a link to that paper in the comments. That's a very well written paper that explains how to do recursion uh, using um, cycles of curves. And so that's what was explained in, in this paper. But what's interesting as well is that uh, earlier in this series of videos, I've talked about Nova and Sangria. And so even though Nova is a pre-proof uh, recursion scheme, they also make use of different uh, of a cycle of curves because you have exactly the same issues. In the verifier circuit, you need to implement this folding scheme um, and you're acting on commitments of polynomials and these commitments are in a different field because they're elliptic curve, elliptic curve points. And so you end up uh, cycling between these two curves as well. Okay, I'm going to stop now. Let's make this video short. In the next video, I'll be talking about more uh, implementation details that arise when you have to do these uh, kind of recursive circuits.